Hello everybody, this is the Retro Bear once again back with you amongst a different room in the uh, Bear Castle here uh, where I live. Uh, we usually are in the brothel for uh, an unboxing video but we've had to be moved out of the brothel. Uh, it's currently undergoing redevelopment and so we find ourselves here in the loft. Uh, yes, so this is the gaming loft. Welcome everybody, hope you are all well and uh, we are going to be talking today about uh, a little system which is catching the retro community by storm. I say storm. It might not be everybody's cup of tea. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but that's half the fun of these things. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. And this little machine has certainly caught the eye of a number of my colleagues and me contemporaries in the retro gaming community. And as a result, um, I've jumped on that bandwagon. Not usually that I jump on bandwagons, but this time I think uh, there's some justification because this is a rather nice little bit of kit. And we don't do, usually do many unboxings on this channel, so hopefully this is a, uh, a nice experience. I've done one of these since the summer, possibly, or maybe even uh, into the autumn last year uh, with the PC Engine Mini and the Mega Drive Mini. So this is uh, something quite new to uh, to me for 2021. Anyway, what have we got here for you? Well, um, as you may see from the graphic, you'll know exactly what I'm about to unbox. This little uh, handheld system has managed to worm its way into the hearts of many a retro gamer over the last few months. Some of us would have woken up over Christmas to find one of these in their stockings, uh, or indeed Santa's stocking. Um, if you have your own stockings, that's entirely your business, and uh, we'll let you get on with that for the moment. But, um, without further ado, let's bring it in. You all know what it's all about. It is, of course, the Evercade. Now, there we go. Just trying to sort out the issue with the camera. It may start going like that a bit. I shall try and make sure that uh, we, we we sort of don't have too many of those things going on. So as you can see, this is uh, the Evercade, and I got on probably just around um, when it first started becoming a bit more, shall we say, um, interested or a you know purchase people beginning to make within the community. So I bought this probably about two weeks before Christmas, and. Yeah, it's it comes in this wonderful presentation box, which is fantastic. And there's two versions of this. Uh, first of all, I would like to say uh, that I am not paid by uh, where I purchase this from, Amazon, uh, nor am I endorsed by Evercade or anybody else, or Atari or Namco, or anybody else you'll see in this video here to promote this item whatsoever. This is just simply me doing a, you know, retro bear introspective sort of information film, I guess, probably the best way to describe it. Uh, yeah, so this is it. There's two versions of this. There is the uh, normal pack, which is the standard pack, which you can pick up for 60 quid. Uh, I should also say that it's also available in Argos. So uh, if you have a branch of Argos uh, as well, you're going to buy it from Amazon. You can also buy it from Evercade. Uh, for, I think it's Funstock, isn't it? Funstock, the cut you tell funstock.co.uk um, and if you do buy this sort of stuff from Funstock actually the money sort of goes more of it more profit goes back to them rather than buying it through the the more conventional methods so we've got this which is the premium pack it's a sing single version available available with the Namco Museum one you all you get is that one for 59.99 this one was cost you 79.99 and as you can see we've got three different cartridges across here Atari Namco and Interplay and this comes with that particular one there annoyingly for some uh, in the running order for the cartridges you can get for this so far it's a cartridge 1 2 and 4 as opposed to 1 2 and 3 but apparently there's some sort of copyright in America about that so I heard anyway I'm just just going off for here saying comments made in the past. So let's have a quicker look at the front of the box. As you can see, very nicely displayed. Some information on here which I'll try and show you best I can. Um, this tells you what it includes, which is the Atari Collection 1, the Interplay Collection 1 and the Namco Museum Collection 1 cartridges. Very important here, officially licensed games. Now, with an emulation device most people will uh, probably sort of presume all these things are built into it and they've generally been done in the usual fashion the sort of stuff you can buy off Amazon, eBay, whatever very very cheaply with like 650 games in the cartridge you may remember I did an unboxing this time last year um, of the Disweyu 400 in one and that was very much the same sort of thing which cost me about 8 quid from Amazon and all it's got is a load of ROMs mostly NES hacked into it with some sort of hacked ROMs later on incorporating characters in the games they had no rights to be. This is different. This is officially licensed. Therefore, you are putting money back into the developers' pockets. These people have worked on these games, and the developers are actually going to be getting paid for doing this. So this is actually technically, although it's emulation, it is actually all legal and above board. You didn't know emulation was illegal? Well, now you do. Obviously you've got the cartridges in there. All these characters cross when you've got the 70, 70, 2600 boxes. You've got Namco stuff right there in the middle, Pac-Man uh, centipede there as well, and then you got Interplay. Now most of you may not know Interplay. The big one there is, is Earthworm Jim, which you probably can 
not make out there at all, but he's there. And there's also Clay Fighter as well. I don't really know an awful lot about Interplay. So really that was a bonus for me to get that, to get those three cartridges on there. I'm going to play the 2600 stuff, I'm certainly going to play the Namco stuff. Most people probably sit there thinking, well, we've had Atari 2600 emulated before, we've had Amco emulated before. Earthworm Jim, of course, did appear on the uh, Mega Drive Mini as well, which we were all a bit surprised about at the time. However, there are much more uh, available for this, which we'll go into a bit further. As it says, more game collections available. Yes, there are more game collections available. Beyond this, there are a number of cartridges. I think we're probably up to 12, I think 14. And hopefully, I think uh, within the next few months, we're probably getting close to 20. Um, I've only got a couple so far. So you have to bear with me on that. There's some people who are far, far more into this collection uh, at the moment than myself, but we'll get there in the end. And also, interesting note, you can play this on your television. Yes, ideal for carrying around for you if you want to play your gaming on the go, as we all almost like to do. But you can sit there and plug this into your television, and therefore you can play it in glorious 720p HDMI. Uh, I'd also like, just before I move on to the rest of the box here, just sort of say, um, why did this catch on so quickly within the community? Well, I've got no real idea. My first inklings of the retro uh, of the Evercade was when my uh, good friend Pete Fighter 2 mentioned it last year and I must be honest with you when he mentioned it to all uh, to us we weren't really sort of I suppose interested it was just another emulated device which we've all seen before but you know Pete who loves these little systems he really does um, you know sort of was the first person to get one and he's now sort of somebody we're all turning to and sort of saying well you know what do you recommend Pete I've asked him I asked him over Christmas what do you recommend as sort of like cartridge wise to get next on and uh, people are now sort of turning into him, asking him all about it. So he's very much the, the number one person that I know to sort of turn to like this. But uh, I said so many other people have picked these things up as well. But I should mention Pete Fighter too, really, because he, he, you know, he was the first probably within our community that at um, you know our corner of the YouTube. Anyway, if you've not known our corner of YouTube, you, you probably may not have come across Pete's channel. I'll put a link in this description below anyway, because uh, you'll be able to see when talking about it from last year. But this, you know was something he promoted very very much himself and we've all sort of caught on to it now it's all a bit late to the party so well done Pete for that and um, I think you know I, I know you gave me some more advice recently about another system so I might have to pick that one up here's the top of the box it's a box it's got the top of it and the camera's in that stupid thing there we go right stop so this tells you what it is you bought the Ever Ever premium pack well really three cartridges again Atari 20 games, Interplay 6 games, Namco 11 games. So you've got 37 games to start with there. Now some of these possibly you're not going to play very much. Some of these you'll put them on, have a go and go, eh, that's it, you know, sort of thing. Fine, whatever. There's something for everybody. And I think 37 games for 80 quid to start with is probably a pretty good start. Um, like I said, some of them will last a bit longer, some of them won't. You'll have to see where we get on. But that's, I think, it's, it's not a bad for free. That's not a bad start for free, really. Uh, what else we got here? Picture of the Evercade. Also tells you about the TV, the uh, size of the screen, 4.3 inches uh, from corner to corner, and the unique cartridges. And you can just probably make out there a cartridge. Not very well, because this, this is not great, but <laughs> we'll show those in a bit more detail a bit later on. Those are the actual cartridges. You've actually got physical media. Now, as a collector, this is sort of like bait to me um, because you can actually put a collection of cartridges on your shelf isn't that wonderful we all like that for those of you who don't like the physical media, media side of things you're not going to be probably picking this up but cartridge 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 it'll come in a nice little case which we'll show you shortly and an instruction manual what more can you want as a collector side the box picture side the box picture bottom of the box that is all rather interesting isn't it Shows you all the uh, games you can get on there. Again, you're not going to be able to see them on this on this camera unless you're watching on a massive screen, in which case you will be able to. Interesting to note, we've got some Atari 7800 games here. I think there's four on here altogether. So out of these 20, you get four of them Atari 7800. You don't usually see that. You've also got there, right at the very bottom, Yars Return. Now, those of you who know your real sort of retro game, I mean, Yars Revenge was a very, very well-known game on the Atari VCS back in days when black and white was still a thing. Uh, this is actually the sequel that was made to it. I think Yars Revenge is actually on the second Atari cartridge in this collection. Uh, I must admit I played it. I didn't quite like it as much as Yars Revenge, but Yars Return is on here, so that's a really interesting one. There's your interplay one. So as I said, mentioned you've got Clay Fighter and you've got Earthworm Jim. You've got Booger Man as well. Uh, Battle Chess. I'm reading this upside down, so have to bear with me because my eyes don't work that way. Uh, Titan and uh, in something else 
Incantation. I think that says at the very, very bottom there. And you've got some Namco games here. So, again, nothing really we haven't seen before on systems, but we've got Galaxian, we've got Pac-Man, we've got Xevious, Mappy, uh, Dig Dug, which is great, great fun. I, I do enjoy playing Dig Dug. Uh, and there's also Star something. <laughs> that Lister. Not... St yeah, Star Lister. I don't thought that was uh, not quite. And then you got um, I think Mappy Kids, which has never been released over here. I think, and there's some other um, sort of less well-known um, Namco games down there. But still, even so, you still got a lot of games on there. You know, working the cart. You know, working this 70, 80 quid for thirty-seven. You know, system with thirty-seven games, two quid each. Not bad. It's not bad. Some of you played before, but some of these are absolute classics, so that's it. And in the back of the box, my, I didn't realize there were so many these boxes, but there are. Cripes. Um, <laughs> right, we've got, there's a picture of the actual console itself, you can see. It just tells you all these basic things, it repeats it in a number of different languages. You've got unique cartridge system slots in the back, uh, responsive controls, the 4.3 uh, corner corner screen, uh, up to four hours battery life. You have battery built in, you can charge it through uh, USB. Great to use. Ideal, really, because I mean, four hours is probably enough on, on, on a small screen. I certainly, it's certainly more than enough for me and my eyes nowadays. Uh, 720p uh, HDMI play the television, and also mentions there are other cartridges available. Because um, it's upside down, I'm not going to be able to sort of read that. Um, but we've got Namco Collection 2. There's also a database compilation. Uh, there's also one about Technos. Uh, there's a Jaleco one coming out as well. So we've got cartridges and well uh, this is uh, the mega cat which i think is a load of indie games that were never actually completed and they've been finished off there's a second interplay one there's one for pico interactive which has got uh, some uh, sort of more i think japanese games on there if i may be correct in saying that i may not i don't know because i've not seen a great deal about it uh, there's also a second atari one there's also now this is probably a great sort of fascinating one there's an atari Lynx collection now most of us probably in our lifetime have never seen one that even held an Atari Lynx. I know I haven't. So actually you can buy a cartridge with like 23, uh, 23 Atari games on it, uh, Atari Lynx games on it, across two cartridges. And I think from what uh, Pete Fighter was saying on one of his videos, uh, one of those games uh, have actually got sort of a number of games in them. So there's even more than just a 23, not physical game, you know, on the cartridge, they're actually more involved than that. Uh, and also uh, there's a Oliver Twins one as well, if you like your Dizzy games. There's a collection of those that which mostly focus on the console version of Dizzy Games rather than the 8-bit ones. And there's also a Codemasters collection coming out. So those of you who played Codemasters games back when you were younger, there's some variations of those on there. Uh, also, as well, because Sensible, so uh, Sensible Software uh, are now owned by Codemasters, or uh, rights of purchase, there will be Sensible Soccer and Cannon Fodder versions coming out on that Codemasters cartridge some point later on this year. Lots to get excited about. And as I said, this is proper, you know, sort of cartridge stuff. And it's been supported very, very well. Interesting to see what's coming out. Obviously, requirements and what people are looking for. You know, there's a lot of talk about possibly, you know, would they be able to do some, like, Amstrad collections or some Spectrum collections or some Commodore 64 collections. Even focusing on budget labels from the 8-bit days, like Mastertronic, uh, US Gold. Gremlin would be a good one, probably, because they were quite a big software house back then. People are sort of... Uh, been talking about in, in sort of chats and, and what have you about Evercade, about the possibility of doing a Hit Squad or an Ocean software collection. I think that's probably less likely. There's a lot of rights issues involved in this sort of business. So what you're going to see on this here is basically what they can sort of put out legally. So shall we have a look inside? Yes, let's stop talking and open this up. I mentioned a little bit of crease in there, which came like this. I was uh, a bit dis slightly disappointed. I did get woken up at 7 o'clock in the morning for this to be delivered. But there we go, so that's the... Nice slip cover on it as well, which I know a lot of people like. There we go. Ready to play again, the Evercade. Lovely, isn't it? Nice looking box. Nice looking box. We do like a, a nice looking box. Now, Blaze Entertainment. <gasps> I can almost hear the intake of breath from those of you who are not quite sure about Blaze, because Blaze don't have a particularly good reputation within the community for basically churning out a number of low quality poorly manufactured, poorly emulated systems, mostly based around the Sega Mega Drive. Um, there's also App Games ones as well, and yeah, they don't have a particularly good reputation, but from what I've experienced on this, and from what I have heard from other people talk about this, they have got right. 
don't let that put you off because a lot of people will look at that and think I'm not buying something from there again you buy you know buy a product from somewhere turns out to be terrible you're never going to go and buy another one of those again regardless please ignore that this is not a prerequisite for the quality that you're going to see in here so there we go nice little flip top box as well and before I rip it I'll uh, just turn that around there we go that opens up like that and there we go it's got a quality control pass which is good because it's not going to explode as far as I know and there we go that is the EverK console nice plastic case there I'll just uh, take that out and as you can see under there you've got the instruction manual the quick setup guide and there you can see the cartridges at the bottom which we'll take out we'll show you those shortly put those there also the only cable you're going to get in here is a uh, USB that's that one so I have no idea which one it is. Let's move this box out. If I move the box out of the way, you can see what I'm showing you, can't you? That's always a good idea. Right, so it's got one of them on it. So that is your charging cable to USB. Now, in order for you to play on the television, you're going to need to buy yourself a cable if you don't have one already, which I will show you very shortly. Let's get the console out. So there we go. Let's move those out of the way there we go so that is the ever k now as you can see rather smart and it's it's pretty light as well it's not a heavy thing Con compared to some consoles handheld I've, I've sort of experienced over the years this is not quite as weighty as it is there is some purchase to it but it's not uncomfortable you wouldn't feel too you know you wouldn't get cramping or anything like that i wouldn't have thought too quickly from it so it's a nice handy size to have uh, what you've got here so you've got your d-pad which very interesting enough they actually um, asked before when, when they were doing the manufacturing this exactly what sort of d-pad that they would have wanted uh, gamers would have wanted and this was the one that uh, came out top it's very good got the buttons here on the other side a little bit stiff I think probably for my liking but you know they're there start button select button menu there's a little light there which uh, lights up when you're um, charging or uh, it's running low you've got a couple of speakers at the front there uh, you've also got on the top a couple of shoulder buttons as well now these are a bit I don't know I'm not overly keen on those and I think when the reviews came in initially there was general unhappiness with those they weren't the greatest things to have you've got um, your connection at the top there which is to run it through the television which we'll get to shortly there's the on off button very handy I'll turn that on for you shortly underneath a headphone socket so ideal if you are on the train or the bus if we're ever allowed to go on those uh, tra whether to transport ever again that's your charging cable connection to the USB and there you've got your volume control on the bottom as well up and down to control the volume so pretty basic stuff really and there's the back of it whoops and you can see there crack the screen now um, <laughs> we can see there that's your cartridge slot at the back so those of you who've got some game you know, only game gear it's exactly the same sort of process as that probably the same as the links as well but like I said I've never owned one so I don't really know but I think that's the same sort of thing cartridge in the top slots in there that's it and you can see the, uh, see the pins in there that's where it goes in so that's it so that is basically what it is and like I said it, it, there is some way to have a battery in there to charge but that is pretty pretty nice actually nice color to it I think in the, I think as well there was a black version which came out at the start but I quite like the red and, the, the red and white I think it works really well that line around there is very sort of retro I do like that it's a nice little touch to it little things like that make all the difference don't they that's your charging cable as we mentioned now we mentioned this uh, television cable here now uh, I don't actually own one of these so I've had to uh, sort of go around and try and pick one up so I've actually managed to find one off uh, off the bay I say I found it, Mrs Bear found it there we go so what I've got here uh, is a little cable and that will then poke into there get it in the right way and then what that will do I can then connect that to my HDMI cable which I've got one end plugged into the television pop the end in there and then what that will do uh, I can then run that through my TV and I've still got plenty of space on my you know, plenty of room on my cable to work like that but you don't get one of those so you've either going to find yourself one of them and plug that in if you want to play it through the telly but I think that's a great little touch 
Uh, it's you know not running through composite. They could have probably have gone down an easy route and done a composite connection, but they didn't. They really made the effort that you can play this on your TV as well. And again, as I mentioned before, not the most ideal thing to be sitting there squinting in front of all the time. So the fact you can just whack it into your your TV and play it that way is most beneficial. And of course, if you put it charged at the same time, even better because then you, um, you can keep playing on it. That's a quick setup, guys. I mean, there really is very little to add to this other than sort of here it is, plug it in, turn it on. Um, I mean, there's, there's like literally five pages of <laughs> instructions, and that is your lot. Not an awful lot there. Great thing about this, well, you can also save your gameplay as you go along, so it'll have save state slots for you. Um, as a way of exiting the game without having to shut it down and turn it back on and off again. You can play Tain games of TV, earphone volumes. You can play the console while it's on charge. Now I know sometimes you're not meant to do that, but it says yes, you can do that. Uh, you can even change uh, the volume on the language if you sh you can even change the language that you're watching it in. And there's also a troubleshooting guide as well. And a couple of people have bought and have had a few problems, a couple of problems, but uh, not so much. I also think when this came out initially, there was an issue uh, which was resolved by a firmware update. Now you can also plug this into your computer via the USB, go to the website, and I think you can sort of check for any sort of future software updates as well. So it it, it's, it is. Okay. You can see the detail they've gone into. You know, we, I kept mentioning Blaze and, and, and sort of the lack of interest and um, sort of, you know, shall we say, poor quality. I don't think we're going to see this here, folks. You know, this this is definitely not that. This is definitely not. A lot of care and attention has gone into this. So that's a console. Let's have a look at the cartridges. Now, these are the three that you get to start with. As I mentioned, there's probably 14, I think. They're certainly going to be. Uh, so, you know, the four or five in the pipeline at the moment, and they are going to be announcing games that have gone through the year. So, hopefully, within the first sort of 12 months, it's been released, which I think was probably late uh, spring, early summer. Well, there should be probably about to, you know 15 to 20 game cartridges available for it. And they aren't expensive cartridges either. You will be paying, I think, if you look on Amazon and, and Argos at the moment, uh, 12 to 15 quid. 15, I think, 14.99 is the sort of standard price. But there are a couple of cartridges that are a little bit cheaper. I certainly think Namco One and Two are cheaper than that. So yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's like, you know, it's not. They are not expensive to pick up. Um, and again, they are sort of physical releases. They're all exactly the same. That's the front. Let's turn you back, which shows the breakdown on there, which gives you an idea of what you're picking up. So you got game, games there, games there. There we go. Focus. Thank you, camera. Games there, games there, games there. I break them down at the back as well, which is great. A bit more of a picture. Just try and read some of these games off to you. Try and see a centipede. So the Atari 2600 one first, if I can try and do that one. Uh, so we've got Centipede Adventure, uh, Alien Brigade, Asteroids, Missile Command, Crystal Castles, Food Fight, uh, Desert Falcon. Uh, what's that one? That Motorcycle. Motorcycle. Yeah, I don't think I know that one. Uh, Canyon Bomber. Where are we down here? There we go. Gravitar, Double Dunk, Ninja Golf, which is on the 7800, which is a well-known game. And Steeplechase, that's that's fun to play. Night Driver, which is not fun. Tempest, uh, Video Pinball, for those of you who like those sort of things. Aqua Adventure, Yars Returns, I mentioned earlier. And Sword Quest, which was uh, one of a, a trilogy, I think a series of games that were, came out uh, sort of like a Try to cash in on the arsehole bar PG thing, I think, if I remember correctly. I think there were three of them all together. I'm not quite sure. But there, so you get plenty of plenty of, of, of kit for your your twelve quid. Now this is where we sort of like looking at all of a sudden the collectors are peeking up because you've got inside here a physical cartridge and also a little booklet. And a little booklet will go into a bit more detail than, than I will about these games. There we go. So you've got Ninja Golf there and we've got Centipede on the same screen. It gives you a few how to control things and what to do. I mean that is a really well thought out thing. No, you know, just 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 a bit of paper with with you know instructions and you know an actual proper booklet detail in the games and a few sort of lines about the game itself, where it came from. You see version release twenty eight hundred nineteen seventy eight hundred nineteen ninety. Uh, so again, a lot of thought, care, and attention has gone into this, and it gives you obviously at the back of each booklet a list of. Games that are available, or cartridges available, so you've got Namco, 
Uh, you've got Data East, the Interplay Collection. Atari Nanko Museum 2, you've got another Interplay Collection down there. Mega Cat Studios, Pico and Technos, which I mentioned earlier. It's all in there. But this is probably what you wanted to sort of see more interestingly enough. And of course that little sort of flips into there with a nice little a sort of clip to hold your manual as well, you see. There you go. Make sure your manual's well protected. This is the cartridge. Yeah, this is what it's all about. And you can see again, clearly labelled. On the back as well, you can see there it's got probably not going to be able to see there because it's white and I'm trying it right. There, there we go, Atari written on the back of it so you can see what it is. And then we've got what it is on the front of it. Now, just to show you how that sort of slots into the back, there's your Evercade, there's your cartridge, there you go. And look at that, it slots in absolutely perfect, not sticking out the top or anything like that. A nice fit, nice in and out. And honestly, that is good. Yeah, you know, I, I bought devices like this where you can put cartridge into, it and yes, I'm looking at you Retron devices because you are the worst, without a shadow of a doubt, um, for these sort of things. Where they basically grip your cartridge and you worry about pulling them out again. This one, straight in, straight out, lovely stuff. Let, see, I think got some charge in this. Uh, there we go. So you can see it coming on there. So I've just turned that on. Try and move that away. If you little start. I've got the volume turned off at the moment, which is why you've probably got no uh, sound. It's got me talking over it. I wish that would stop doing that. And there you go. So you can actually sort of, with your controller, just sort of scroll through the games. There's Asteroids there. If I click the select button. If I press in select or start, I don't know. There we go. And there we go. Asteroids. And you can actually sort of go, you don't need to sort of turn it off or go back to where you are. You can actually sort of press the in game menu. And then if I just want to quit the game and go back to the main menu, there you go. And just a bit closer up of that as well. I'm not quite sure how it would work, but there you can see. So again, Proper loading screen, you know, proper sort of menu select screen. Fantastic, isn't it? Really? Absolutely fantastic. I think just turn it off at the top, and that's your Bob. There you go. Bob's your uncle. May not be your uncle, I don't know. Might be a friend of the family. That is it. Now, as always in these situations, it's much fun to see some of these games on the big screen. So, uh, what should hopefully follow now? I always put a disclaimer in because you're never quite sure how technology is going to work uh, in this situation because it could all go horribly wrong. But what should follow now is a quick, brief um, sojourn through some of these games before we come back here and talk about the package in general. So roll the footage.
So that was either a rip-roaring success or a complete failure. Um, we'll wait and see what happens when I get round to recording the footage. That was going to precede that segment or not. If you segue straight into this, then something's gone horribly wrong, as always. So, there you can see your three game cartridges, your console, the instruction manual, the USB charging cable, and a really, really nicely put together box. I mean, quite frankly, quite frankly, why why would you not want to invest in something like this? Here's another thing for collectors that I didn't show you to start. There you go, take a look at those spines. Isn't that wonderful? I like that look. That's that you know, sort of it, it just screams retro. I don't know why. Whether it's the colour, the the font, I'm not entirely sure. But what this does also is it numbers the cartridge. So you've got one, two, and four, as I mentioned before, because you've got one, two, and for some reason there's an issue with number three. Um in some of the pack I don't know. I've heard that it might be a, a copyright issue or a legal issue, I don't know. Um uh, anyway. Let us, not, let us not dwell on that, let's move on quite quickly. One, two, four. Now, that there, you know, sort of, yeah, can you imagine all that lined up on your shelf? You know, one, one, two, four, like, you know, all the way across. Collection of 17 cartridges, all the same colour, numbered so you can pick them off the shelf. That as a collect, you know, that for a collector is like, you know, um, mana, isn't it? <laughs> You're going to want to sort of pick those up and bring those in and, yeah. Just absolutely wonderful. So, I mean, I cannot speak highly enough of this little machine. And I'd actually, in all fairness, I, I, I will be honest with you. Um, just try and sort that focusing out again. There we go. I, I will be honest with you. I, 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 I ignored this when it first came out. I really did not. I, I couldn't really, in, in all fairness, care less about it. Because I thought, it's just another emulation device. It's going to be a load of games we've already seen before. Which, to be fair... Atari and Namco have been emulated to death. This one, perhaps not so much, the Interplay one. And then you look at some of the other you know, game cartridges that are coming out for it, and you can see the effort is being made. You actually buy one of these, or play on one of these. And it's a nice experience. I played Dig Dug, Dig Dug uh, for a couple of hours, um, and I really enjoyed playing it. Uh, I played Dig Dug back in, back in when it first came out years and years ago. Um, and it was you know, a, a reasonably... Uh, fun game on the 2600, but you know, I, I didn't. I wasn't so raved about it. Uh, but playing it on this, well, I, I just sort of sat there and quite happily enjoyed myself. I got Mrs. Bear to have a go on it. She was playing Earthworm Jim for a little bit. Didn't get very far with it, but she was very impressed with the quality of the screen. The screen is excellent quality. The D-pad is fine. The only thing, if I have it, if I have an issue with this appliance, I don't like the shoulder buttons. I think they're pretty flimsy. Um, they, they, they feel like they've been worn well worn and they're not they're brand new and the buttons are a little bit on the stiff side but i suppose that may sort of clear up with playing i like the cartridge aspect the fact that it's a physical media you can plug that into the back there that really appeals to me as well the fact that at 80 quid i don't think it's drastically priced itself out of the market i think if it was priced beyond 100 quid i think probably that would be a bit too much i think the price here is about right don't forget you can pick that up at 59.99 with the namco collection if you wanted to do so you don't have to have this version i've had this one because it came with three cartridges it's a good starter set you could buy that on that and then you could add your own ones like i said there are a number of different things out there the fact you could be able to get a cartridge for the atari the two cartridges for the atari Lynx collection as well is massively appealing and if that's where they're going with this appliance of trying to bring in emulation for different systems or different areas that we haven't seen sort of flogged to death of the gaming community this could have a very 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 bright future in 2021 certainly and i think it's off to a good start and so many different people have picked them up uh, in the last few months or so um and are looking to pick them up they've seen other people talking about it. they don't want to know what it's all about and I hope that it's a success. I really do. I've been very fortunate to sort of come into contact with a few people in the community who are very uh, pro Evercade and trying to back this up. I've mentioned Pete Fighter too. I should mention him again because I always tend to mention him on videos nowadays. James at It's Much More. And of course my good friend Andy at UK Kraut Gaming. Big supporters of the Evercade. And uh, I trust that um, you know this just will carry on and be a success there are other people i know have sort of supported this as well and got right behind it and some of those people have actually influenced me behind it to sort of pick one of these up i don't usually follow it i, I tend to leave things i tend to leave alone and i have let this alone because obviously it's been a few months after it was released i don't sort of jump in these things sort of straight away but having heard what people said about it i i, I you know and i've experienced myself i really do like it i can thoroughly recommend this it's yeah, it is great. If you're a collector, you like physical cartridges and stuff like that, it's superb. 
if you want something to play on the go, I think you know you, you you know for the price of a second-hand PSP and some old games, you can get one of these and 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 it'd be exactly the same sort of price really. Go for this. It's it, it's much nicer. It's different. It's you know I, I like the design of it. Uh, and this, I think, is going to go some places. Plus the fact you are also putting money back in the pockets of the developers and the, and, the, and the creators of these games, rather than just buying an item and all the money goes to somebody who's whack this, uh, rip this onto a ROM for some quick money into an old Game Boy shell or something like that. But that's what it is. So it's a big thumbs up from the Retro Bear. Don't give many of those on this channel. That's just a new thing I've just thought of at this very moment in time. Um, I'd love to know if anybody else has picked these up over the holidays or intend to pick one of these up going forward. If you do, please do leave a comment below. Also, I would appreciate it if you haven't uh, watched any of my videos before. And if you have enjoyed this, to uh, have a poke around the channel and see what else you enjoy. There are plenty of other things in there. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to do in terms of liking or subscribing. That's entirely up to yourself. Uh, but I hope there will be something in there if you've enjoyed it that would interest you as well. And to everybody who's watched this video because they do enjoy what I do, thank you very much indeed. It is hugely appreciated and um, makes me feel a little happy about myself. In the meantime, I will leave that with you and the Evercade and say this is Retro Bear in the gaming loft saying thank you very much indeed for your time today. Do take care and we will see you again very, very soon. But until then, it's bye for now.